Hello, here's another video on bringing your Quixel mixes into Marmo Set Tool Bag. Now I've created a plane here, and how to create this plane is to go to Edit, uh, Plugins, Generate Primitives, and you can create like a plane, right? If it's not in view, just uh, click on it here and do Control F to bring it into view. Right, so I'm going to bring in the mix that I created in an earlier video. And I'm just going to look for my Quixel Mixers folder. And I think I called this demo something. Let me just de modify it. Demo Mix 1, okay. Um, bring in my normal. The roughness, but I actually changed it to gloss because I'll be using this in Unity. The albedo. And the metalness and because I've got like displacement a displacement map I'm going to add uh, I can either do parallax and use the displacement so let's see what happens if I do displacement here I get a kind of parallax effect uh, it's not so easy to see it You'd have to be kind of top down to see it properly. Uh, so let's change this to displacement and it'd be a height map. Let's get the displacement there. And suddenly you can see it's it's kind of trying to do it, but maybe put this back to normals for one. And also I need to change the way that the subdivision works. So I'll do P and triangles and tessellation I'm going to put quite high and bring the scale of this down so you can see it's starting to do the, the tessellation but it's not perfect let's just change this to 0 0.5 0 0.5 I think is a kind of standard and then the scale would be the amount that it's pushing away tessellation I'll bring quite high Change this to flat to see what the difference is. Okay, so there's not really a lot of tessellation in this mesh. I can't tessellate it much further. So it's maybe a good idea to go ahead and make your own plane with a few divisions already in it. And then subdivide that. This seems to have a limit here. But you can see how that looks. All right. And in theory, that should tile. So if I was to duplicate this mesh and move it in place here. Okay, I just need to make sure that the actual tiling of the texture is correct. Change this to two. Yeah, you can see it's it's matching up back to, right? And now we can go ahead and bring in a different skies. So let's put this outdoors uh, in the forest. And yeah, apart from the, the tessellation limit, you can see that it looks pretty good. The PN triangles is not much better because I can't get past this threshold. So I'm going to come back in a minute after I make a plane. Okay, so I went ahead and made this plane, which has got far more divisions than I need now. So if I bring this down, you'll see that I've got 16, 16 divisions by 16. And that's enough for all kinds of LOD versions of this, you know, and it's going to be automatic when this thing's tessellating based on distance. So as I bring this up, I'm getting all that detail back now. And I've got more than I need. I can go even, you know, to a higher amount. 16 by 16 uh, plane seems to be good for the job. Uh, I can also change the scale of this. A bit more realistic there. Right. Now, one little thing that I don't like too much is the fact that this 
it's all quite kind of noisy and flat and not flat even it's quite it's quite noisy there and I guess that could be down to the the normal map or the, the displacement map so I'm gonna go back in a quick so and just make sure that I have a nice flat layer now I did a little bit more messing around with it uh, before export before I exported um, I did like a paint layer just to try a few things but I'm just gonna get rid of that and then I added an extra liquid layer and I just want this to be the thing that flattens this out a bit now it's a little bit delicate so I need to be careful with the values Oh, oh, seven. Let's just see what zero does. Okay. See, it starts to wrap around too many things. It's it's just looking like ice. I just want to get it low enough. Threshold minus um, point oh one. Eight. Okay, maybe oh six. Let's go oh five. Right, and it's just helped flatten things out a bit. Um, maybe the radius or something is too high. I want it to be quite, uh, quite an easy fall off. harsh, I want it to be a harsh kind of fall off, I don't want it to go too far Let's get rid of this one see a lot of this is just, it's too wet looking looks like it's been raining I'm just trying to get the right amount There we go. Okay, that's more or less what I want. Maybe it needs just a little, little bit of a blur. Uh, I think radius is the thing we want. So a tiny bit of radius, and I guess a small bit of blur. Just helps to ground things a bit more. Okay, so I'm going to export these maps and just overwrite the existing ones and hopefully it should just update in Marmo set tool bag okay so I'm back in here and there we go it's a lot more like what I want nice dark forest I'm going to add uh, just a light to the sky here just where I find the lights the strongest and I'm going to change that light color to more of a sun color. Have it cast shadows, yep, yeah, brightness up a bit. And there we go, it's much more of a forest scene. Some rocks, you can imagine some trees uh, nearby this. You can bring in any creatures and characters. I've got a, an ogre character that might fit this scene quite well so I'm going to go ahead and import that. <coughs> um, that is kept. Another thing it would be good is to have the ability to merge things in a uh, tool bag to merge different scenes together so hopefully that's coming let's just find this one right hopefully 
there. He's pretty huge. Now I can either scale this up, which I will. It's probably easier to scale the plane up. Let's go 5, 5, 5. scale. He's the forest ogre. And uh, let's get his textures on. Do we being a bit more glossy? Uh, maybe metal gloss. Just added his albedo in as his gloss map, and then I can control the value of that. Let's change it to roughness. shiny looking. Uh, I can change his skin to be uh, subsurface. Increase the, you know, the width of the light, make it blur a little bit. Um, not sure there's a shadow strength. No, maybe I'm thinking of something else. Sky, chill out, brightness. There we go. Yeah, it's quite good fun. So I've just set a little scene for this guy, I can then add in like a vignette uh, let's bring the sky image in, so we change this to actually a blurred sky I'm pretty sure we can add fog as well. So we can add fog. Be good to get the fog behind them. Now let's add a little bit of sharpness. That'll bring them out a bit and maybe some contrast. Let's see if this is up any higher. Yeah, that's as high as it goes. Just add another light, like a rim light or something. Uh, this will be uh, using Omni. So get it so it catches the side of them just a bit. And increase the brightness. Uh, 
Good if it didn't affect the fog so much. Uh, yeah, just decrease the lights. We go. Um, change the color of this light. <coughs> And there you have it. So that's how to bring your uh, displacement maps from Quetzal into Toolbag and then you know, render them all for your character work. So I hope you liked that little tutorial. Thanks for watching. Bye.